Hi guys, my name is Arya and I'm from Edutecha. So we are back again for a demo session and today's title is Ethereum Explain. And that's exactly what I'm going to strive to do today. We'll be discussing Ethereum as to why industry bigwigs are so excited about it and we'll see what new features it brings to the table. Now before we dive into the session, let me quickly tell you people the topics that will be covered by the end of the video. First things first, we'll be discussing the need for Ethereum and the vision that conceptualized its idea. Secondly, we'll be discussing some basic differences between Ethereum and Bitcoin, mostly regarding the block structure. Next, we will be discussing the various protocols that run Ethereum and also the parts of Ethereum ecosystem that make this all possible. We will be also looking at an interesting concept called gas, which is basically the computation credit on the Ethereum system. You'll see what I mean in a short while. Last but not the least, we will be discussing what exactly are decentralized applications and why they have taken the world by a storm. After that, I'll show you guys a demonstration of a decentralized app myself, which I'll be running on a local test network. While the demo won't teach you guys how to build such decentralized applications, it'll give you a keen insight onto the architecture of such applications and how they're actually deployed and tested. Okay, so let's get started with today's topic. Now, as the saying goes, necessity is the mother of all inventions, and it very well holds true in the case of Ethereum. With the invention of Bitcoin, the world truly understood for the first time the beauty and importance of a decentralized and distributed network with no central authority ruling the network and trust being established in a transparent manner blockchain technology brought a fresh hope onto the table in the realms of data security and information integrity developers from all over the world were inspired by simplicity of the ideas that tie up intrinsically to make such a revolutionary technology that is blockchain now with so many developers out there it was only obvious that a few of them would try and invent their own use of the blockchain some developers created a blockchain for identity verification, while some made a blockchain service for taking care of gambling money in a secure and seamless fashion. Others created blockchain services for things like property sale, supply chain transfer, communication between Internet of Things, and whatnot. But if you guys notice something, that all these services serve one purpose. It's like having a big box of tools, with each tool serving only and only one purpose. The blockchain development community had come to a stagnant point where a developer would make protocols for his own use case, get the distribution, set up the hardware just for his own release. Even if a blockchain platform did have multiple features like a Swiss Army knife, there was no way we could add more features in the future in these platforms in a seamless fashion. This can be attributed to the very specific protocols that govern these different blockchain platforms. What the world needed was a generic platform where new features can be seamlessly integrated into the platform without worrying about things like hardware requirement, computation power, distribution, and this is the exact vision that Ethereum is built on. The creator of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, explains that Ethereum's platform has the generality of a smartphone. So what's so great about smartphones? Well, suppose you want to add a new feature to a smartphone. All you have to do as a developer is write the code instead of worrying about other peripheral issues like distribution, connectivity protocols, etc. He writes his code, pushes it to the desired platform's app store, and he's done. Ethereum works in a similar fashion. Developers who aspire to release a feature just simply write their code by defining it as a contract, and all he has to do is release it on Ethereum's network, where a service can be availed by anybody participating in that network. So now that we know the necessity that propelled the need for a platform like Ethereum, let's discuss the features it brings to the table. Now we must have a benchmark of comparison to see what is new in Ethereum, and in Bitcoin being the only notable blockchain before Ethereum makes it a very easy decision. So Bitcoin as a blockchain decentralized the financial system by removing the need of intermediaries like banks and other payment gateways like Visa and PayPal. Ethereum takes this idea way further and tries to decentralize most services imaginable. This is with the help of smart contracts. So before you guys get confused as to what a smart contract is, let me take a moment to explain them. So smart contracts are programs or pieces of code that run on the blockchain. Sure, in 2018, we have a lot of platforms that have smart contracts available, but it's the first platform that is Ethereum that brought about this massive change in the way we approach the concept and realms of decentralization. So Ethereum allowed code to be executed on the blockchain. Code being executed could be simulating various business logic like gambling, identity verification, payment verification, market trading, property sale, etc. This opens up blockchain to numerous fields being run by centralized authorities instead of just confiding it to the simple bookkeeping of values. Aside from letting us run business logic on the blockchain, Ethereum also keeps a track of its state. So a bunch of you guys must be wondering what exactly is a state. So the state is a log of the current situation of the network, which can be also explained as the current information about the network, the smart contracts, and its users. 
Aside from all this, it also keeps a track of all the receipts, which are the results of any computation or processing on the network. Aside from these two, it obviously also tracks a ledger of all the account balances and transactions. So as you can see, Ethereum in its process of decentralizing the world brings a lot of new concepts to the table like states, receipts, and smart contracts. Okay, so as we had discussed, the difference that lets Ethereum shine amongst a plethora of blockchain platforms is its sense of generality, which makes adding new features a seamless process for developers. This is mainly possible with Ethereum's simplistic and generalized protocols. Let's take a quick look into them. Firstly, Ethereum has two types of accounts. The first being guest accounts and the second contract accounts. Guest accounts are owned by us everyday human beings and these accounts are controlled with the help of a private key only known to the owner of the account. Contract accounts on the other hand are not owned by anyone. It is the address on the blockchain where smart contracts reside. As you might have already guessed, contract accounts are controlled by code. The key thing to understand here is that both these accounts have equal rights on the network. Equal rights in the sense that both types of accounts can send, receive and store Ether, which is Ethereum's network specific cryptocurrency. The second protocol states that anybody can create any application on the network with any rules by defining it as a contract, which means both guest accounts and contract accounts have the freedom to create an application with any set of rules as long as they're defined as a contract on some address on Ethereum's blockchain. The third protocol states a very defining characteristic of Ethereum as a platform. It states that anyone can interact with these smart contracts by sending them transactions. This lets smart contracts to interact with each other. So suppose there was a property sale application running on Ethereum, which needed some sort of identity verification for its user base. The application could simply send a transaction to some other ID verification smart contract running on Ethereum. In this way of smart contracts communicating with each other, a lot of services can be tied in and truly the marketplace can be decentralized. Last but not the least, like every other blockchain, Ethereum is also very much immutable. Even updates to smart contracts that were previously deployed have to be stored at a new address. This makes maintenance of smart contracts a little cumbersome as previous users have to be redirected to a new address for the service. But I guess it's a shortcoming we all will learn to live with. So Ethereum advertises itself as the world's supercomputer. But in my opinion, it's more like an online vending machine which offers all sorts of services. Like any vending machine, all you need to do to avail a service is send that specified address some transaction. In my opinion, it's a very smart approach at a decentralized marketplace connecting all sorts of businesses, industries and service providers alike. Now, some of you on the other side of the screen must be wondering as to where does all this computation get processed. Such large number of computation must be taking some ridiculous amounts of parallel processing. Well, to take care of this aspect, the Ethereum ecosystem provides us with four tools. The Ethereum Virtual Machine, Swarm or IPFS, which stands for Interplanetary File System, then we have MIST, which is the Ethereum blockchain browser, and Whisper, which is the communication protocol. So let's go over them one by one. So the Ethereum virtual machine is a sandboxed environment where all the code is run. While it is also the heart of the Ethereum ecosystem, the Ethereum virtual machine is completely isolated from the rest of the main network. It is a perfect testing environment. Any company looking to create a smart contract can do so using the EVM without it affecting the main blockchain operations. Testing this technology is one of the most utmost importance as flawed code can spell demise for even the most exciting of smart contracts. Second, we have IPFS, which serves as a decentralized storage unit for storing bigger files. Big files are broken into smaller chunks and hashed continuously and stored in a different address on the network by maintaining a hash table. Then we have Whisper, which is the communication protocol that lets all these components and smart contracts communicate with each other. Last but not the least, we have the MIST browser, which serves for browsing the blockchain, viewing its state, and deploying smart contracts and executing transactions. These four are generally called the pillars that hold Ethereum. Now one might say with so much computing power available, one might even try to overload the network by running a program that practically never stops executing. Well, Ethereum has an answer to this too. This problem is tackled by issuing computation credits called gas. The gas price per transaction or contract is set up to deal with the Turing complete nature of Ethereum and its EVM. The idea being to limit infinite loops. So for example, if you are 10 Ether, which also computes to one gas, you can execute a line of code or some command. If there is not enough Ether in the account to perform the transaction or message, then it is considered invalid. The idea is to stop denial of service attacks from infinite loops, encourage efficiency in the code, and to make an attacker pay for the resources they use, from bandwidth through CPU calculations through storage. The more complex the commands you wish to execute, the more gas you have to pay. 
For example, if A wants to send B one ether unit, there would be a total cost of 1.0001 ether to be paid by A. However, if A wanted to form a contract with B, depending on the future price of ether, there would be more lines of code executable and more energy consumption placed on the distributed ether network. And therefore, A would have to pay more than one gas done in the transaction. It's a neat system to keep computation overload in check. Okay, so now that we've generally covered the different aspects of Ethereum, enough for one to understand the needs and working of the technology, let's see some of the interesting applications that have been developed on the platform. Okay, so first things first, applications running on Ethereum's network are called decentralized applications. Their core logic is run with the help of smart contracts written in an Ethereum specific scripting language called Solidity. These applications do not have a single point of service, so a denial of service attack on them is practically impossible. This means decentralized applications while having no singular ruling authority also offer zero downtime. So let's discuss a couple of my favorite decentralized applications. The first one on the list has to be Ujo. I personally love the idea of this application and how blockchain makes this possible in such a smooth fashion. In today's music industry, distribution services like Play Music, Apple Music, Spotify, and other label records take a significant cut from the revenue made by artists for distributing their content. What Ujo does is, it connects the audience directly with the artist. In this way, when a person buys an album, the money is directly deposited into the artist's Ethereum wallet without any intermediary like Spotify, taking a hefty cut from the principal. Not only does this take us a step forward towards a truly decentralized world, but also keeps indie artists who depend heavily on album revenue to continue their career. Second on the list, we have crypto movies. It's a place where you can trade movies with other people using the service. It's a great way for trading movies and watching titles that are generally not available without resorting to piracy. It's a neat service to replace movie rental services completely. Okay, so talking so much about decentralized applications, I guess you guys must be interested to see what one looks like from the inside. This brings us to the demonstration I promised you guys. So I have a simple decentralized application set up and ready. It's a simple jewelry store which runs on a decentralized network. What's the point of running it on a decentralized network? Well, not much at the moment, but this is just to give you guys an idea what the files that a blockchain developer actually working on Ethereum handles on a daily basis. So let's get started. First of all, let me show you guys the files that make up the project. So here we have a folder saying on Nile Jewelry Shop. And as you guys can see that we have several folders out here. So the build folder out here contains the JSON file, which is the application binary interface of all the contracts that we have created. The application binary interface tells the contract and the HTML interface that what are the functions that are actually in the contract that are to be executed. Next, we have the contracts folder, which has very basic contracts. The first is a buying contract, which basically helps us buy jewelry and handles the logic for it. And it's written in solidity. I'm not going to show you guys the code as you will not understand any of it. So let's move ahead. Next, we have the migrations folder. Now these are two JavaScript files that actually help us migrate our code from this network to a test network. So suppose we actually have to test our code or deploy it on the main network. These are the migration files that help us. Next, we have the source code, which is basically the front end. We have our CSS stylings. We have our JavaScripts that handling the dynamic aspect of our site. And then we also have the index.html, which is basically our boilerplate HTML code. Next, we have the test folder, which contains the test buying solidity contract, which is basically just to test our code on a test network. Next, we have the configuration files and the package files, which contain all the dependencies. Next, we also have the JavaScript file called truffle. So in the truffle JavaScript file, you actually have to specify the host and port network that you are going to deploy or test your smart contract on. So let's get started and see what this actually looks like. So first things first, let's actually run our test network. To do that, we are using this node package called Ganache CLI, which provides us with 10 accounts to actually fiddle around with our smart contracts. So go on command prompt and type in the command Ganache CLI if you have it installed, and you'll have these 10 accounts with their own specific public keys and private keys. You will also have this mnemonic, and we'll be copying it down and using it in some time. So next, we actually have to compile our code. For compiling our code, I'm using this neat framework called Truffle, which actually solves a lot of my issues. So first of all, we have to go into the folder. Once we're in the folder, I just tell Truffle that I have to compile my code. So I go Truffle command compile. As my code is already previously compiled, this is not showing anything, but this is how you do it. Then you have to migrate your code. 
So truffle CMD migrate. Now once our code has migrated, all we have to do is run our project. Now you guys must be sure that we are running our project on a test network and this is just for deploying and testing our stuff. So as you guys can see, our site has loaded up and this is our decentralized application. We're selling a bunch of jewelry to people on a decentralized network without actually putting in intermediaries like proper jewelry stores in the middle. So before we go ahead, we have to install this thing called MetaMask, which actually bridges our decentralized applications and the test network that we are running in the background. To do that, we go ahead and download MetaMask. MetaMask is a Chrome extension and can be easily downloaded from the Chrome Web Store. So just go here and say add to Chrome, add extension. Yeah, and that does it for us. Next, we have to set up MetaMask. So you just click accept, go down, click accept again. And now, instead of creating a new password, go and click on import existing den. Now, as you guys remember that there was this mnemonic that was generated by Ganache CLI, we have to go and copy down that thing. Copy this thing down, paste it out here, and give yourself a new password. So as you can see, we've connected our decentralized application to the test network. Well, only one step is left out here. We actually have to tell MetaMask that it's running on localhost 8545. As you guys can see, we have 99 ethers to spend and we'll be going on spending our stuff now. So suppose anybody comes onto our shop and wants to buy something. So yeah, you just go and click purchase now and MetaMask will tell you that you have initiated a transaction. You submit your transaction and wait for it to get mined. And once it's mined, it should show a success out there. So as you guys can see, we once purchased our diamond ring and it shows a success. Our transaction can be seen on the Ganache CLI command thing. And as you can see out here that a new block was formed when our transaction was initiated. So this is how people or rather Ethereum blockchain developers work on a daily basis by testing and deploying their smart contracts and decentralized applications. So coming back to our session, let me tell you about Ethereum's course at Edureka. At Edureka, we teach Ethereum in a very structured and modular way. You'll be going through beginner level topics like Blockchain 101 and even advanced topics like the Ethereum architecture, the basics of solidity programming and decentralized application development. Edureka provides live instructor-led online training and leaving that aside, Edureka also provides a 24-7 support team that is there to guide you through your technical and non-technical issues that are related to the course. Once you enroll for a batch, you will be provided with a lifetime access to Edureka's carefully crafted learning management system. The learning management system will contain your class recording, presentation, PDFs, and information regarding your projects. At Edureka, once you enroll for a course, you can even reassign your batch at your own convenience. If you're not satisfied with a single go through of the course, you can even sign up for future batches n number of times. Classes that you miss are recorded and uploaded to your learning management system just to make sure you really never miss out on anything. Okay, guys, that was it from me. I hope you guys learned something today about Ethereum. That's it. Goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!